In this video, we're going to look at the highlights of the 2023 release notes for Wave 2. This covers things that we'll be releasing between October 2023 and March 2024. Let's get started. The first item that caught my attention that I think is really important, even though it's a really small change, is being able to set the solution context for customizations. What does that mean? Well, currently, if you think about it, when you go in and you just start making changes randomly in a application or a data table in Dataverse, the changes that you make are going into the common data service default solution and use the CDS default publisher. This is bad for a number of reasons, but you know, let's start with the wrong prefix being put on there. All of them are going not into your project solution. They're kind of going into this generic solution that everybody has in every environment. It's just not a good way to manage your customization. So in the future, what you'll be able to do is select any other unmanaged solution to be the active solution context. And this is where things will go when they don't have a home. This will get things more orderly and put things in more structure for projects without having to always worry about where things are going when you create a new asset in your project. Also in the future, admins will be able to define rules for solution names and other things to bring some consistency and some standards. And we'll learn more about that when it gets close to the release, which will become public preview in October of 2023. One of the areas that's always tough to deal with and has always been improving in Power Apps is being able to create responsive applications. By responsive, we mean things that adjust automatically to window sizes or on different devices and don't put the burden on the app maker to spend a lot of time managing those changes. One of the things that one of the things that's in the new release that will help that a lot is responsive layout templates. And these are green layout templates that have pre-configured layouts for multiple form factors, already doing the hard work to allow some of the responsiveness to flow. You can see on the right side there, I've got kind of the desktop view. And then if you get the mobile view, it just flows without the application having to worry about that. So these templates are designed to make building apps a lot easier. Now, unfortunately, the public preview of this will be at towards the tail end of this release wave in March of 2024, but it's still good to see a lot of work going into making responsive apps easier to build with Power Apps. Another feature that I think will be popular is the Power Pages Bootstrap version updates that are coming. And essentially what this is doing is, if you know about Power Pages currently, it uses Bootstrap 3 as the current styling framework. And so this is when you change the look and feel, this is the version that you have to use. For those of you that know, Bootstrap is up to version 5, so Power Pages is using an older version. This has been some contention for a while now because people want to take advantage of the new things that Bootstrap 5 offers. So with this upcoming release, Power Pages will start using the latest Cascade style sheets from Bootstrap version 5. This will allow sites to use the more current styling concepts that everybody's using on their websites today and will be very welcome addition to the Power Pages lineup. And for those of you that have Power Pages sites already that are using Bootstrap 3, You'll be happy to know that there's a migration tool that will allow you to migrate the existing websites to the latest Bootstrap version and give you some indication of any problems that were encountered or recommendations that you might need to remediate before your site goes live after running the conversion. Switching gears to the Power Automate side of things and cloud flows, you'll be able to run cloud flows for more than 30 days. I know sometimes this surprises people when they first do stuff with Power Automate is they say, what do you mean it can't run for longer than 30 days? So Microsoft will be extending that. They haven't made public how long they'll extend it. So I'm just going to leave that there. It's going to run for more than 30 days. And Let's stay with the Power Automate theme for a second and talk about something for admins, which is managing bulk abandoned cloud flows. I know nobody has cloud flows that people have created and left the organization. They need to figure out how to reassign them and deal with them. Today, that's done by doing this one at a time, and it can be very tedious, especially if you have somebody that's created a lot of stuff and then left the company. So what this will do is give some visibility to be able to view information like the who the last owner was and the number of days since the flow was last ran. They'll be able to do this all from the admin center and be able to see what's going on. They'll also be able to perform maintenance operations like reassignment to another owner or stop the flows without doing the individual opening and doing the action on each individual flow. 
So this will go into public preview in November of 2023 with the GA around March of 2024. I tried really hard to not bring Copilot into this since the last release wave was all about Copilot, but I did want to highlight for Power Virtual Agents, one of the things is the ability to use Dataverse to create answers on there. So Power Virtual Agent has the ability to use generative capability to have the agent use existing internal and external sources for the bot to be able to answer questions. What will be coming up in this release is the ability to use Dataverse as a source for those AI generated answers. And so this will be coming in general availability in October of 2023. This next one is one that I'm happy to see some effort around and that's the consolidation and replacement of all the legacy Dataverse connectors that are in use to one connector moving forward with that current codeless connector that we all know and love for Dataverse. And so basically they're trying to get this all pulled together with a public preview around August of 2023 and GA around October 2023. And this is one I hope lands on time because it, I think it's so important to get to that consolidated connector and move forward this next one is one to keep an eye on. I think it could be ultimately pretty cool. It does have the AI theme to it. Dataverse AI columns comes with data operations. Little mystery surrounding it. It's not too clear what exactly you're getting, but it you know highlights this feature enables makers to author and trigger actions from using AI Builder to create text with GPT model in the logic components in Microsoft Dataverse. I was able to get a little bit more from the product team on this. Think of it as smart, low-code plugins that can perform column enrichments inside Dataverse columns. So I think this has the potential to really open up using AI and some of the automated ways around the data when row actions happen. We'll have to see what comes out as it gets closer to public preview. September 2023 is public preview with general availability in December 2023. The final one I want to highlight is another one for admins, and it's one that's particularly important if you have a lot of environments. Think of it if you have hundreds or thousands of environments, being able to manage them and being able to group them and manage them becomes really important. What we'll see coming in this wave is the ability to create groups of environments and apply policies or rules to those environments to make changes and consistently manage them across the board. So look for this coming for admins in the upcoming release wave. Well, that basically wraps up the look at the highlights of the 2023 wave two release notes. Make sure you check out the full release notes so you can get the full story. I tried to highlight some things that if you had five, 10 minutes that you might find interesting. 